Yirashaimase. Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this week, we have Darius 2. Classic Taito arcade action. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From legendary developer Taito, Darius 2 released to arcades in 1989. Over the years, it would see inclusion to several different uh, compilations as well as ports to other systems. This title is a follow-up to the 1987 Darius, and the version that we're looking at today is one of the more unique versions. This is the Arcade Archive version, released in October of 2023 for the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. So, I'm a huge fan of the Darius franchise, but I haven't actually looked all that much at the original Darius and Darius 2 arcade versions. So, it's been really fun to go and dive into this one. This is the rare three monitor version. For Darius 2, the usual um, configuration was a two monitor variant, including in a lot of the ports that the game did have the multiple screen variant. So if you're not familiar with the Darius franchise, the first two games, and some of the ones that came later as well, used multiple monitors to create this really elongated effect. It's actually kind of a technical marvel, and uh, they're just incredible games that way. I highly encourage you to check out the Darius franchises. They're excellent shoot 'em ups. Um, for this particular game, you can find it in recent compilations on the Darius Cosmic Collection or the Title My Milestone 2 Collection, or you can check out the Arcade Archive release. That said, let's dive into the game. You can see what the gameplay is like. So, putting credits into the machine, we are going to be playing this game as a two-player, as it does support two-player co-op. We start off flying above the sun, flying the series' iconic Silverhawk fighter. So, some of the differences right off the bat. Uh, this game uses um, enemy formations to get our power-ups versus like individual enemies that have the power-ups. Uh, there's also, when you initially start the game, there's this uh, voice section that we only see at the beginning. Um, and that line right there is wonderful. It's kind of a pity that we don't have uh, more of that, but I always wanted a thing called tuna sashimi. All right, so as far as our gameplay here, it's a standard vertical, or sorry, a horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up, with the exception that the screen is super long. So in the arcades, this was done by using three monitors, and the way that they would stitch them together, since you would have um, the borders on them, especially on a classic CRT, they used mirrors. So you would have one monitor that was actually on the screen, and then a mirror to kind of uh, just reflect the part of the screen that you actually wanted. A really great way to handle like uh, your border problem that you would have uh, with that setup. Uh, but as far as like uh, our gameplay is concerned, it's actually relatively straightforward. We have bombs. Uh, which you uh, aren't like a screen clearing bomb or anything like that and we have our main shot which uh, is actually referred to as a missile but it's what you would normally see as a laser. Uh, one thing that Darius 2 uh, did add is there is actually a laser added to the game um, where the initial level that we get for that fires above and below and then as it uh, powers up we see uh, other elements of it. So we're already at our first huge battleship approaching this boss is actually very straightforward and uh, doesn't do a very good job of preparing you for the rest of the gameplay, I feel. Uh, in addition to being relatively weak, there are um, these screen clearing nukes that if you destroy, will make quick work of the boss. So if you're not familiar with Darius, once you finish a stage, you get the choice of uh, choosing between um, two options route-wise. So for our purposes, we'll just stick to the top here, go A, B, D, but you've got a branching path that ultimately includes 28 stages. Um, although on the end you do have uh, B and uh, X um, duplicated, I don't actually know if the stages are the same or not as I haven't played through all uh, 28 stages of uh, the game just yet. But uh, even though some of the enemies and some of the mobs are repeated, it's really great that you've got that kind of variance to the uh, gameplay itself as there's quite a bit um, there. So another thing that was added in uh, Darius 2 are those captains, basically those elite enemies that we've been encountering throughout the course of uh, our gameplay 
Uh, they're basically like mini bosses, and some of them can actually be very difficult uh, to challenge, uh, even in the mid stage. Although, if you don't destroy them in in time, they will ultimately um, just leave the stage on like uh, the bosses themselves. So one thing that I do want to go and point out is just how uh, great the mech design is in the Darius uh, franchise. So the enemies themselves are usually, um, well sometimes they'll be more like standard sci-fi fare, but a lot of them are aquatic based uh, enemies. So you'll have ones that look like uh, fish, um, or uh, octopus, sorry, we'll use the plural, octopi, urchins, uh, all sorts of just different, like, sea life just done in an awesome uh, mecha form. Um, so that's one of the things I've always appreciated about the series is just how bizarre uh, the enemies are. You also have this fun, a huge battleship, Alloy Lantern, is approaching fast. So whenever you have a boss approaching, you get that. Um, one thing that's odd about this boss, though, is for the first half of the fight, this one that we're fighting with now, there's no music uh, playing at all. It just um, quits. And there are a few other bosses throughout the course of the game that I've encountered that with. So something a little bit on the odd side. Uh, but this boss is multi-phase. We have this outer face that once we destroy it, We'll move on to the inside of the ship, and we'll move to phase two of this particular fight. The actual alloy lantern itself. And basically, that's Darius 2 served up for your enjoyment. One of the really fascinating things I feel about this game is just like uh, the... Um, how... Um, ambitious going with a multi-monitor and screen setup like uh, was. It like uh, took like something that was fairly run-of-the-mill by the late 80s and made it unique by bringing in this super elongated view. But that's not to say it doesn't have its problems, and this particular version of the game itself also has some issues. So as far as the minus flavors are concerned, one of the big things I've experienced with Darius 2 is I have a really hard time building up momentum with power-ups. Because of the enemy formations for the power-ups, it's oftentimes very hard to destroy the enemies where you can get those power-ups, and then there's issues uh, obtaining the power-ups, especially later in the game, as the difficulty level starts to ramp up uh, very, very rapidly. Like this stage here, we've got enemies that are firing revenge bullets, uh, all these missiles that are flying at us, some homing, some like uh, straight fire, and it just, like, even though we've got power-up uh, enemies flying on the screen now, there's, it's not easy to destroy the whole formation, then you miss the power-ups and you're still at the same level you were before. Um, so there's that as an issue. Uh, the other thing to note is that the difficulty, like, is another, like, a concern as the game, like, does really ramp up in difficulty from the midpoint on to the end, uh, you'll be, like, dumping quarters into this arcade version, uh, pretty rapidly. Some of the home console versions are considered to be a little bit easier than the original arcade version, so that is something to keep in mind. And then, uh, as far as uh, presentation is concerned, this is something that's a little more unique to the Switch. If you don't have a large enough monitor or TV to display this on, it can be hard to see all the action going on with the smaller presentation present here with that whole multi-screen um, setup. So, especially if you're playing it on the Switch in handheld mode, uh, you're going to have a tough time, like, uh, necessarily seen everything that's like there all the bullets are like really well defined the background and all the art is like uh, crystal clear but it's just very very small as far as the plus flavors are concerned so uh, one of the things that really impresses me about this is just how good the graphics look you have a really awesome like a set of backgrounds there's oftentimes a lot of parallax going on there and then the enemy sprites and the pixel art are just top notch and uh, where you have great mecha design in like uh, this particular franchise 
with uh, all the enemies being kind of like um, based off of like fish or other kinds of like um, nature based life forms it's uh, really something that's unique and fun it's this particular like franchise and then one of the things I've always really enjoyed about um, the Darius titles is you've got those like branching paths. So even though it's like uh, might be a one run might be kind of like the length of the standard um, shoot 'em up, there's a ton of content here in most of the titles of the franchise. And lastly, we just have classic excellent gameplay. It's just a lot of fun to just like sit down and uh, blast through a run, even if that run is brutal. So there you have it, Darius 2 served up for your enjoyment. Certainly a recommendation from me, whichever way you want to go and pick this up, either on like uh, this a la carte uh, release from the Arcade Archives, or if you're looking for a more, um, uh, see, or looking to pick this one up as part of a compilation. All right, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, we want to thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful week yourself, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.